Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here, and it has been quite a bit of time since I have done any general Android tips and tricks video, so I figured I'd go ahead and do that now that 2018 is here since there's been a lot of Android updates since my last tips and tricks. So these are going to be general tips that should work on most Android phones. You can drop a comment if certain ones didn't work on your phone. And some of these are somewhat hidden uh, out of the way. And I've also noticed a big influx of new Android users coming from iOS, and that's all they know. Uh, so I figured, okay, I better include some tips that are on newer versions of Android that kind of differentiates Android from iOS as well. I do plan to do these types of videos more often now, so go ahead and be sure to click that subscribe button so you're notified when I publish them. To begin, I am using the Google Pixel 2 at the moment, which does run stock Android. Your skin might be different, so some of the wording that's used might be just a little bit different, so keep that in mind. But however, the settings that I'm mentioning are pretty much all the same across the board. So the first one is just a tip for battery life. When you're not using it, turn off your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi radios. That way it's not scanning anything in the background. Very simple one, but will actually help increase battery life. Another big one to definitely test out different settings is in the display settings. You can change the screen size uh, and also your font size if you'd like to. I leave font size at default, but I bump my screen size all the way down to small. For me, that just makes it so you can view a lot more things on the page. So for example, if I go into my settings you, and I'm all the way at the top, you can go all the way up to users and accounts. But if I go back into display, advanced, display size, and I set it on the normal default amount and I go back again, it only goes down to the storage settings. So you can just fit more on the display. However, of course, maybe you don't have that great of vision and you need to make things a little bit larger, you can also do that. They have large, larger, and largest. But for me, it's just easiest uh, to keep it all the way down at small. While we're in display settings, you might wanna check and see if there's a way to actually change the colors of your display a little bit warmer, a little bit cooler, uh, and you can do so on the Pixel 2, natural, boosted, and saturated. So it's kind of up to you what personal preference you like, if you like colors a little bit warmer, or cooler or not, uh, that's up to you. Notifications on Android are actually much better than those on iOS, and I feel like a lot of people agree with me. But uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, you swipe down once and twice, you can get to your quick settings. You can also use two fingers from the top to quickly go into those quick settings. And then also, if you have a specific notification, you can use two or one finger, or you can tap on a little arrow there. But if you go ahead and drag down from the notification, it will expand them and individually show you each one where you can expand again and then individually act upon each one. Let's say I don't wanna see this Netflix one, I can just swipe it away and there you go, only two left. And there's that little arrow I mentioned, you can just quickly tap it and that will expand and contract your notifications. One of my favorite features on Android is actually really underused simply because a lot of people just don't know about it. And that of course is when you press and hold the home button, you will get to the Google Assistant. That's not what I'm talking about. When you press and hold it and hit what's on my screen, when you're looking at something specific, you'll see I'm in a messaging thread. It says, let's meet at Chipotle at 6 p.m. today. I press and hold the home button and press what's on my screen. And here's what comes up. It's saw Chipotle, so it gives you a bunch of information, a bunch of links that you can get to Chipotle, but also create calendar event. And if you tap on it, it will automatically go into your calendar and just create an event. Meet 6 p.m. today at Chipotle. And that is just one of the more cool things. It works with people, buildings, spot, different addresses, phone numbers, you name it. So if you have something on your screen and you press and hold, it's going to just analyze everything on your display and come up with an information. And then you can also just share a screenshot. It will take a quick screenshot of what's on your screen when you press before you press and hold, and then you can share it. Next up is using that recent apps button to quickly swap between two apps. You have the Play Store open, double tap that recent app button and it will quickly switch between two apps, which makes it very easy to multitask between the two. And then of course, if you want to go ahead and use the split window or multi window, press and hold that recent apps button. It'll load up a list of your recent apps and then you can go ahead and use two apps in multi window. Next is in the quick settings, you can actually press and hold on these icons and it will take you quickly into the specific setting that you press and hold on, which is fantastic if you're looking to get into a specific setting. And then also you can customize these icons up at the top. However, you can also add ones from third-party apps. I'll link to the one I use below. It's actually called Quick Settings right here. Uh, and if you're on Android 7.0 Nougat and above, you can add one. So you'll see here, I have a few, one of them being a counter. It shows me the weather right away, a quick, um, 
shortcut to YouTube and a dice. So if I tap on the dice, it will roll it and you'll see the number is changing every time I tap on it. And there we go, two, one, three, six, you get the picture. And if I tap on the YouTube one, it'll just load up YouTube for me. And the last tip I'd like to talk about is that of how do you unlock your phone. So of course, most phones now have a fingerprint scanner or a pin pattern, anything like that. But if you go ahead and jump into settings and go into security, whether you go into your screen lock uh, or you'll wanna find smart lock, and that's where things get a little bit different. So if you go into smart lock, you have a bunch of different settings that you can actually uh, train, whether it be a trusted place, whether it's on your body, a trusted device specifically, or voice. You can train all of these to help you unlock your phone much easier. Trusted Face is one a lot of people don't know about it. Android has had Face Unlock for a long, long time. And no, it isn't as good as the iPhone 10. Don't get me wrong, but it does have a Trusted Face feature where you can set it up. And if you hold it at eye level, it will go ahead and record your face and generally work most of the time. So you saw how quick that was. I'm gonna go ahead and test it. I'm gonna lock the phone. I'm gonna go ahead and just look at it and swipe up and you'll see that was unlocked. Now I'm not going to look at it and it should stay locked and it did. And like I said, it, it doesn't work as well as the iPhone 10, but it does work well. So it's worth trying out and worth testing, especially if you have those friends that have the iPhone 10 and think it's some new revolutionary thing. Face unlock's been around for a long time. Apple has just done a very good job at implementing it better. So overall, that's it. Those are all my tips for Android as of early 2018. Stay tuned for a lot more to come, helping you out with your phone and other tech items as well. So be sure to click that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching.